Hi everyone, my name is Rob Torres and I'm an artist, inker, and colorist. Some of my work includes colorist duties in one of IDW's Star Mage stories, as well as several independent companies here in Florida. Some of the companies I've worked for include companies like Hashtag Studios, where I'm the current colorist for Tail Wands, Creature Entertainment, where I was the artist on Bubba the Redneck Werewolf, along with other well-known local companies like CAE and Resistance Entertainment. From time to time, I like to make tutorial videos or how-to videos and post them on the web for you guys. So please, check it out, and if you like what you see, follow me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, or Periscope. Thanks. Hey guys, uh, just wanted to drop in a very quick uh, explanation or narration of what's going to happen in this video. This was originally a tryout page that I did for Creature Entertainment for their flagship title, Ravenous, a werewolf title. Um, they wound up going with another colorist who was, uh, in my opinion, equally as, as awesome. Um, we just had a little bit of a different style and they wound up going with his, but uh, the this is actually uh, I actually use only one style uh, throughout this whole uh, process here. I sped up the video. The video was originally about 45 minutes long. Um, it's now down to 15 minutes. As you can see in the layers palette over here on the right side of the screen, um, I pretty much have different elements on different layers and that gives me control over just how much editing I can do at, on each element individually. This is an old style that I don't use anymore. I did this last year. I actually have streamlined the process a lot more now where all the elements are on one layer and I just cut them out as I need them and then do all the work I need on them, integrate all the changes into the element, and then integrate the element back into the whole. Uh, and what I mean by elements here is the different parts of the image. For example, the skin tone for one particular character. The male werewolf character in this, for example, has a darker brown skin tone base, while the female waitress in this has more of a... Um, uh, creamier color, uh, lighter uh, brown. Uh, she's obviously Caucasian, but she has a little bit more of a brown in her. Um, then there's a different layer for the hair for the male, the hair for the female, the bandages. Each, each, each of these components or elements gets their own layer. So I lay down the color for each of these elements into its own layer, which by the way, that's time consuming in and of itself. The flatting process, this method or any method, I think flatting this piece uh, took about mm, two, two and a half hours. Um, the flatting process can actually be the most time consuming. Uh, I don't use Photoshop. I know that Photoshop has an automated uh, process you can run to flat pieces. Um, but you still wind up having to go in and change the actual flats to suit your needs. They're just already uh, grouped for you. So it's easier to select the individual elements and change the color than it is to close lines, do the initial groupings, lay down the color. Uh, and let me, let me back up a step here. Flats normally denotes or, or m when someone says flats, they mean the flat color uh, with no tones, no rendering. So the brown or the, the light, light brown of the girl's skin or the auburn hair or the gray hair or the red for her shirt. These things are all the uh, flats. Uh, nowadays, I like to work on all my flats being on the same layer, like I said. It's easier, it's more efficient, and it's better at print time. But using this process, it's you have a lot of control. So as you can see, what I did here was I laid down, for example, the skin slayer with his skin. Sorry about that, you can see my playlist. Um, so I have this skin on the skin layer. Then above that, I created another layer called hard light. 
this is usually where I lay down the shadow. So like the shadow of the hair coming down on his face and whatever. The next layer up is a screen layer where I lay down the highlights or the light sources, the, the shinies, the gleams, whatever. Uh, each element has a hard and screen light layer. Uh, attached to it so like i have a layer there for hairs and then a hard light layer and a screen layer right above it then i have a skiz layer a screen screen hard light i will create more layers as i need them and normally that's not a problem i uh i just keep going and add more multiply for other deeper textures so anyway that's that and you can see where I am basically going with all of this. Using the marquee tool and the cut paste, I can get rid of excess uh, material that I don't need as I go along. You'll also see me enable and disable layers so that I can see how things are looking without my shadows and my highlights. It lets me, I don't know, keep tabs of where the piece is at. So anyway, I'll let you go and you enjoy the video. If you have any questions, hit me up in the comments.